Hey everyone, Christopher Paolini here with another crispy writing tip. And today's writing tip actually doesn't have to do with writing directly. It's more about lifestyle and it is about fitness and fitness tips for writers. Uh, some people were asking, this, this won the poll on YouTube uh, for uh, a gym tour, which we're going to do, and I'm also going to talk about, as I said, fitness tips for writers. Now, I'm going to preface all of this by saying I am not a fitness expert. I am not a physiotherapist. I am not a strength co coach. Uh, I am not a doctor. So if you want professional advice on any of these topics, go find a professional. However, there are some great people out on YouTube and the internet in general that uh, can probably help you with this. One of the things that I certainly went through as a, as a learning experience in fitness is figuring out who to listen to, especially if you aren't taking steroids. And um, I'm not taking steroids. So what is going to work for you if you're not on steroids is not always what's going to work for someone who is taking exogenous hormones. Uh, and this holds true for men, for women dogs, animals, what have you. <laughs> uh, now, I, I'm very, very passionate about fitness, and I feel it's very, very important because my profession means that I sit an awful lot. And this is true not just for writers, but an, uh, you know a lot of people in the modern world. And unfortunately, sitting is as bad as smoking for your health. At least that's what the research shows. Constricting uh, the blood flow at your hips and at your knees, it shortens your hip flexors, it, it restricts the blood flow, it impedes metabolic function in your body, just everything kind of goes to crap when you don't move. The downside is, well, there's, there's lots of downsides, but one of the unfortunate side effects of that, then, of that is that because you don't move, you don't feel like moving. Now, I, for various reasons, was not able to exercise the way I wanted through most of my 20s, which is unfortunate because that is the time in your life when you really should be exercising as hard as possible, building all of the strength that you can and all of the muscle that you can to carry you into later life. Now, if you are older, and by that I mean outside of your 20s, uh, you still can gain strength, you can still build muscle, but it does get a little harder. It's not impossible though. Now, why is this so important? Well, I mean, every single study we have says that strength is directly correlated with reduced mortality in every field, whether that's cancer, heart attacks, etc. If you are stronger, you are harder to kill. You're also more useful in a physical sense. You can move things, you can open things, and if an emergency happens, you can actually perform in a way that would otherwise be impossible. Um, and, and then on the cardio side of things, same thing. If you can get your cardio up, overall mortality comes down and your brain works better. You know, there's a reason why so many authors are big, big proponents of walking. Walk. Walking helps get you, give you ideas. It helps you solve problems and is so easy on the body. You can do it and just let your mind wander. Walking is the greatest tool you as a writer have for your brain and for overall fitness outside of strength work. Uh, now, one downside of strength work or heavy exercise in general is that if you, let's say, go to a CrossFit class or you go to a powerlifting meet or something like that and you push your body to the utmost, unless you're a freak, unless you are a genetic freak, and even then, you're going to have trouble thinking clearly the next day. Your body is going to be in recovery mode. It's going to be saying... You know, we just went through the ringer. We have to devote our energy to building those muscles back up, repairing the tendons, uh, just generally getting the energy levels back up. Now, as a writer, that's not good because it means that if you exercise hard and you can't recover from it, that your writing, your mental ener your mental effort, your mental acuity. Sorry, I actually exercised really hard yesterday, so I'm <laughs> struggling to put these words together. Your mental acuity will be decreased. And if you're trying to write, that's something you can't really afford. On the positive side with all that, exercising at submaximal capacity means that you will increase your work capacity and your muscularity and your fitness faster in the long run than if you're always pushing uh, you know, as hard as you can. Uh, not all of us can be Eric Bugenhagen. And if you want to look him up on YouTube, you can. And that guy, I, he, he is a genetic freak. Now, as far as my own fitness journey goes, I reached my adult height when I was, I want to say, 16 or 17. I stayed the same weight from the age of 16 to 17 all the way until 
2008-2009. When Eldest was published, I had to go to um, New York City to get a suit fitted for the, er the premiere of the Aragon film. Not that there was ever an Aragon film made, but if there were, that's what I was getting a suit fitted for. And the reason I had to go to New York to get a suit fitted is I couldn't find any suits here in Montana that fit me. Anything that fit across the shoulders was just too baggy everywhere else. So I was in New York City, I went to Saks Fifth Avenue, ended up finding a suit that kind of fit my shoulders. And then I had to have a tailor there in the store rebuild the suit for me. He had to literally deconstruct the pants and rebuild the pants as this old Italian tailor. And he's going, what's wrong with your mother? She doesn't feed you. Because I was the same height I am now, and I was 120 pounds which for me is really skinny. I could literally touch my fingers. If I, if I put my hand on my upper arm, I could literally touch my fingers around my upper arm. And with my two hands, I could do the same uh, on my upper thigh for my legs. So I had no muscle. I had no endurance capability. It just, it wasn't working. So... Fast forward a couple of years, I was a little better, maybe I'd gained like five pounds, not a whole lot, and uh, I changed up my diet. I had a massive change of diet because I started looking at what athletes actually eat, and I wasn't eating that way. I was eating a lot of oatmeal and toast and, you know, things like that, and not actually the sort of food that an athlete needs to eat. As soon as I changed my diet, I gained 40 pounds, of mu uh, 40 pounds within about three and a half months, and most of it was muscle. I mean, not all of it, but a good chunk of it. Uh, after that, I have just kept up with the diet, and I've climbed up to where I'm happy with my body weight now. Um, so I went from 120, and these days I hover around 195 pounds and such. And I don't really feel the need to push it much further. Um, maybe I'll go over 200 someday if I really feel like lifting really heavy weights. But I'm happy here. So that was an incredible journey for me on the fitness side of things. And I can tell you, from the writing side of things, improving my fitness, improving my strength, going from being so weak that, you know, the 12 pound dumbbells here felt really heavy to now where, you know, 60 pound dumbbells are just kind of average working weight, if that, made an enormous difference for my stamina, my mental acuity, and just general, you know, quality of life. Now again, I'm not the strongest guy in the world. I'm not the fastest guy in the world. I started late with my fitness, but I feel passionate about it and I keep pushing the limits as much as I can. So anyway, overall advice here, lift consistently, lift weights consistently, do it in a way that is not going to burn you out uh, the following day, do it at a level where you can be consistent. So whether that means you lift weights every other day or every, you know, for three days in a row and then you take a rest day, something like that, get your cardio in. Um, I recommend some like the Maffetone, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, Maffetone, Maffetone method, you know, you find your, uh, where your maximum heart rate is and just sort of hold there for, you know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that. Um, I don't have a treadmill here. Uh, our treadmill's out for repair. Um, but you can do a Nordic track, you can do walking, you can do running. That's really easy way to get your cardio in without burning out. Um, and then just you know, have fun. Unless you're training for a power meet, uh, you know, you don't have to overdo this. Have fun and keep pushing your strength up consistently. Okay, so that's the that's the long rant. I'm going to do the little gym tour now. And the reason I have a home gym is because the nearest gym from where I live is a minimum of 30 minutes one way. And given how crazy work is these days, I don't really have an extra hour in the day to be spending driving back and forth to a gym. Uh, and I like to, and you know, as we all know, Sometimes it's hard to get yourself to exercise. So anything that makes it harder to exercise is something that you need to pull out of your life. And for me, that meant that um, having to drive to a gym meant I just wasn't going to exercise. So this is an old converted garage actually in our house, and uh, it's a good place for a home gym. So I'm going to start over here. So some basic equipment is a box for box jumps and various weighted balls, medicine balls and stuff for uh, plyometric activities. I'm really fond of these. These are called slam balls. I got a 20 pound one, a 10 pound one, and those are really good for just slamming on the ground. And they're great fun when you have kids over, um, you know, 
you know, neighbor's kids or something and you want to have fun exercising with kids, slam balls are kind of the thing to do. Uh, this is a balance board, which is uh, nice for keeping your balance up after sitting all day. So fairly basic stuff. We've got a weight bench here, which is going to go with the rack. Uh, dumbbells, we have adjustable dumbbells and uh, kettlebells. Nice set of kettlebells. Uh, kettlebells are really awkwardly shaped things, but that's what makes them so awesome because uh, they're the best thing I think you can do with a kettlebell, aside from maybe a Turkish getup, would be a hip hinge movement. So that's the kettlebell swing. However, a lot of people think that it's also a shoulder exercise so they do the swing and then they're bringing their arms way up here or even higher it's not really what a kettlebell swing is for a kettlebell swing is to develop the power in the hips that is the lower back the lumbar region the spinal erectors the glutes the hamstrings so you really just bend at the hips pop forward and you let that move the weight and even if it just comes up just a little bit you go back down unfortunately with kettlebells you can't really go too heavy so uh, if you want to train that movement as an actual loadable exercise, you need to build uh, like a loadable pipe device. You can just get some pipes from Home Depot or something and build something you can put plates on and with a T-bar cross thing, and then you can really train the hip hinge movement. That's also where like a glute ham raise or um, I'm forgetting the other one that's similar to a glute ham raise. Uh, reverse hyper or reverse hyper can also help train that so dumbbells are great uh, you definitely need a notebook to train to, to keep track of what you are uh, lifting and <laughs> what your numbers are if you don't write it down it doesn't exist and you're gonna have trouble pushing yourself forward uh, if you really want to <laughs> have fun you can get some ammonia capsules uh, I don't really use these but every once in a while for like a heavy deadlift I'll pop one of these and um, take a whiff and then lift something heavy. Uh, pro tip, cats hate these. Ask me how I know. All right, let's see. Foam, uh, foam rollers for foam rolling. And these are lacrosse balls, which are excellent for if you have a tight spot, you know, maybe on your back or your shoulder or something. Really important. Remember, instead of doing rehab, do prehab. There's a, there's a crispy tip right there. All right, moving on. Barbells. You got to have barbells, bumper plates, and metal plates. Those are all good. Uh, I have two Olympic barbells so that I can load those up and do different things at different times uh, at the same time, which is nice. The dowel is for uh, shoulder dislocations and other things like that. Uh, I'm enormously fond of this axle barbell. Now this is only 35 pounds. Uh, regular Olympic barbell is 45 pounds, but the axle barbells have a thicker grip. Uh, which allows you to train your grip and I don't know it just feels better in my hands when I do overhead pressing so this is a I want to say this is a Titan axle bar I got it off Amazon a couple of years ago and um, haven't had any any problems with it uh, also as far as equipment these are some dark iron fitness uh, weight straps which I've been pretty fond of I don't use straps too often usually just max deadlifts uh, every once in a while and I also have their uh, weight belt. And by the way, uh, no, I'm not sponsored by them. I just am a big fan of this because it's over. It's built like a tank. Uh, so I use this for weighted pull-ups and never had a problem with it. Works like a charm, all of that. So got a big rack here. Uh, it's a half rack. Uh, I'm actually looking at getting a full rack in the near future. You don't have to have a rack but it really is nice for you know all the big lifts and with a pull-up bar that makes it easy the various weight bands are for rehab prehab and uh you know face pulls that sort of thing uh if we come over here we've got a nordic track treadmill is out for repairs now that, and that's really it there are a couple other pieces of equipment i want to get like perhaps a reverse hyper a full rack uh, that would be nice also but really as long as you have a barbell and you have a way to get it on your back and you have weights to go on the barbell you really have everything you need to train effectively I mean you can build a great physique and great fitness with that and uh, get a good get a jump rope get a jump rope a good jump rope is a thing of joy and uh, jump roping uh, there's a reason why boxers use jump rope to build a lot of their cardio along with the running so as long as your knees can handle it uh, I'd highly recommend some jump rope 
So that's the gym tour. I know it's not a whole lot, but it's kept me happy and sore <laughs> and uh, tested my limits over the years. Uh, I'm, as I said in another video, my goal is to, my goal was to hit a 500 pound deadlift this year. Unfortunately, because of the touring and everything and work, uh, I'm a little behind on that schedule, but my goal is still to hit that 500 pound deadlift. So if I can get there in the next, let's say six months, I will certainly post a video of it and um, that will make me very happy because it's not the heaviest lift in the world for someone my weight, but it's been a long-term goal and given where I started, I'll be very happy when and if I hit that 500 pound deadlift. Not when, I will. I know I will. So yeah, that, the, that is the gym tour. Those are my crispy tips for fitness for writers. The main thing is just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know how realistic, realistic this is for some people, but I, there was a period I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago when I would, every hour, I would stop writing, get up, go up against a door in my uh, office, and I would do, you know, as many handstand push-ups as I could, five or 10 handstand push-ups, building up as I built up the capacity. Uh, that was easy for me because I didn't weigh a lot. But now that I've gained good grief... 70 pounds was it 77 80? yeah 70 pounds i can still do handstand push-ups because i still do that on occasion so if you ha if you can do handstand push-ups they make for a great break from writing they get all the blood back in your brain but whatever you do even if it's just walking up and down the stairs going up and down the road outside your house or something it's super super important and i guarantee that if you move you will see your writing improve you'll see your plotting improve and of course, your overall health and fitness and general well-being will improve. So that's my crispy tip. Go forth, be awesome. I'll be back soon. Of course, the question I know some of you are going to ask is, so what do you lift, bro? Or do you even lift? Uh, I do lift. And as far as what I do lift, um, you know what? I'm not going to say because unless, I, unless you're world class, it actually isn't that impressive. I don't lift for the numbers, although I keep trying to drive the numbers up. I lift to make myself feel good and look halfway de decent and feel a sense of accomplishment. So I lift enough. <laughs> I lift enough and I'll leave it at that.